I've got a list of types of garments I've never sewn and I want to. One of them is a trench. I found about 10 sewing patterns for this type of garment. I'm going to show you some fabric choices, some specific things you might encounter when you're going to sew one. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and I've got an inspiration video for you today. It's all about trench coats. I did some reading just to find out about the background of this type of garment. Thomas Burberry, you probably know the brand Burberry and it's got a military type of origin. The first types were created with rubberized cotton and then there was another type of fabric created called gabardine which is water repellent. The most well-known classic trench coat is the one made by the brand Burberry. I've never actually needed one you know this is a highly functional coat or jacket and if you live in cold rainy climate with a lot of wind you know it could actually be something really practical for you because of the features that it has but Sometimes we would just want to sew something because it looks pretty and because the features are just appealing, that's all. It's not that we need it for function. Many of the features you see in a trench, we don't actually need. I have found a few photos that sort of describe the basic features. Well, on sewing patterns, you won't see all of them. So you'll, sometimes you'll see some of them, some will be missing or some new ones will be added. You know, it's a very free thing to create a sewing pattern and to create a design based on a trench because it's not the original military garment as such. They usually be made out of some type of water repellent material, usually gabardine, but there are other types of materials. Some are lined, some are unlined. And then the length can be from the upper thigh down to below the knee to very long. But then the features that you have around this area, you will see them over and over and over as they repeat from different designers. You'll find pretty wide lapels with the collar here. It's quite wide, it falls over. They'll usually have buttonholes and that allows not just the collar to lie like this but also that you could put it up, close it and overlap one over the other and have a really closed sort of neckline there if that's an option. If there's too much rain and wind, you know. But that's the whole idea of having a lapel and the collar that's just generally wider than other types of designs. On the shoulder seam you see epaulets. In the military I suppose it's got something to do with identifying what sort of rank you are as a soldier. It's a piece of fabric right there with little loops. Very bulky in my opinion, <laughs> not a fan. Sometimes on one side or both you have a sort of gun flap or a storm flap. It just covers the chest area right here. I sometimes I'm worried about where those are going to land on the chest so it's different if you look at it from the masculine original design where it's just flat on the front and there's no bust coming forward but sometimes I feel that this gun flap might be a little short and it might hit on a place where we have our bust and our projection that might not be too nice. <laughs> So I'm always worried about that when I look at a sewing pattern that does have that and I want to see where that's going to land, if it's going to land on my upper chest or sort of just splitting my bust in half right at the apex, I worry about that. You usually have some type of welt pocket with a flap on the entrance that was also to protect your pocket and the things you put inside from the rain. So it's not just an entrance, there's usually some type of flap around there that protects the entrance of that pocket, usually slanted. With some sewing patterns I've seen that they've simplified this and don't have the original welt pocket, they just have a patch pocket with a flap. So you'll see variations there. Usually at the bottom of your sleeve you have some loops and a type of belt that you can adjust. So if it's raining and it's cold, you can cinch that in and bring the wrist in closed so that, you know, when you're walking, the rain doesn't go into your sleeve and onto your arm. So that's something functional, but that I just find pretty. I usually wouldn't need that. And some trenches have a raglan sleeve, some have a regular setting sleeve, so that can vary. Usually it's a two-piece sleeve. Usually these are really well made, well tailored, well shaped. The way that this closes is usually double-breasted. There will usually be an overlap and buttons going down sort of on both sides. That's also for function to protect against the rain. But then there are other styles that are single breasted. So it just depends on what you like. And I have found patterns that have either or. At the back, you have something similar to the gun flap on the front, but it's on the back. And it just makes moving easier. It sort of provides ventilation from underneath, I suppose. And that's quite a common feature. And then for ease of movement, walking and all of that, you have some type of vent. I have made a jacket in the past that is not a classic trench because this one is a cropped one. 
but it is inspired by a lot of the features and I had a good experience of how sewing these features feels. This is a Soraya jacket from Sew Over It. I have a full video about it, a full review. It was quite an involved project. It's unlined on the body, it's only lined on the sleeves. I didn't do any lining on mine, but you'll see that there's a lot of the features here. This collar and lapel, I would say, is just a regular collar and lapel. It's not wider or bigger than the traditional trench, so that is not a feature that this jacket has. But you do have the epaulets right there. So this was extremely bulky to sew. I think it just enhances shoulders. So if you don't want to make your shoulders look wider in relation to your hips, I don't suggest doing that. But if you do, then I think it's cool. <laughs> I know I had a rough time sewing all the layers here in this area and I wouldn't be doing that again. So whatever pattern I choose, I'm not going to be sewing on the epaulets. I just I just don't like it. <laughs> here on the sleeve, it's a two-piece sleeve and we have some belt loops with the belt. This one is actually non-adjustable, so it's just for the pretty factor. You can't make it smaller or cinchy in the bottom of the sleeve. But it's still nice and then on the front we do have the gun flap or stone flap right here and i chose to do the inner layer with a lighter lining material it's sort of like a curved shape here and it looks pretty it's okay the only thing that if you add that to the stone flap on the back which is right here it creates a lot of bulk on the armhole when you are ready to set in your sleeve you not only have the layer of fabric from the main fabric but also all these flaps so you end up with three layers of fabric all around the armhole when you want to sew your sleeve and it's really bulky inside, a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> so that's why I'm always thinking, you know, those things look nice, but how do they feel? I'm sure if you choose a size that's going to give you enough ease to move around inside the garment, then you'll be much more comfortable than if you try to keep the ease at a minimum. So I think these types of garments that are outer garments should have a nice amount of ease. So that even though these seams are bulky, you won't feel them that close to you. So that's my opinion on that. And then even though this is a really, really short jacket, there is a little vent over here that's overlapped with my little corners. We do have the diagonal welt pockets here. Although they're non-functional for me because the jacket is so cropped, I would have to do this to put my hand in my pocket. But it was a good sort of experience into the way that sewing this feels like. So to show you the patterns, I'm gonna go over to my computer, I will try to find a white background so that it's not distracting, and we'll just go over the patterns on the screen from their website, it's just easier for me to do it like that, and we can see together all the features, all the details that these patterns have, the sizing, and my thoughts as we go. Then I'll be back to discuss a little bit about some of the sewing parts, my fabric choice, and final thoughts. The first one I have here is called Luzerne Trench Coat and it's from Deer and Doe and it says it's a level 5 out of 5 which means it's an advanced sew. I totally see that. I don't really see any trench being an easy to sew pattern at all. This is described as close fitting, aligned, double breasted, princess seams, pleats at the front and back, diagonal welt pockets and two piece sleeves. I can see it's really well shaped and on the inside all the seams are bound with colorful binding. I have my thoughts about that but I'll let you know that in a little bit. And also I have an issue with the total length of this trench because it's a bit shorter than the skirt or whatever she's wearing underneath. I really don't like that. I want it to be really short like in the upper thigh or then below sort of hitting the knee at least mid knee so if i were to make this one i would measure carefully and see how much length i needed to add to get the length that i really wanted i really like this belt loop i think it's different and pretty holds the self belt really really well here it is closed up i think you can see the features more with this version than with the other one i really like this royal blue i think it's different the collar and the lapels are quite wide here here you can see the princess seams comes from the armhole there's a yoke at the back i don't see that there's a stone flap at the back i think with the liner you can really see what's going on the pleats on the back and on the front i think could look really good the size range isn't that great though from sizes 34 to 52 euro European. I think I'm a size 50 European or 48, somewhere around there. I believe that Deer and Doe draft for a C cup. I think that is their base of the block. So it would fit me fine without doing any bust adjustment. And I think the princess seam here would be really helpful with the fit right there around the bust. I like that about this pattern. 
They've used here a cotton twill fabric, so it's not anything that's weather resistant, rain resistant or anything like that. I really like it, I think it's nice. And then I found a free pattern from Mood called Lighter. It says it's a unisex trench. Now I've never used a Mood pattern, so I can't really say if it, they're good, you know, how they are. I've never seen the way it fits on my body, the drafting according to the size chart. It could be something that you want to look at if you don't want to spend any money on a pattern. I would prefer to spend money on a pattern actually, because at least then I know I'm getting something that's been tested on a lot of people and that I can find a lot of information about. I think this one is a little simplified than others and it's different because it's got raglan sleeves. As you can see there, there is a two-piece sleeve. There's a seam on the top of the shoulder that on a woven would incorporate a shoulder that to give you that shape right here and the lapel the collar is really wide self belt I don't see any pockets or storm flaps or any of that so I would say this is a little bit of a simplified version I highly doubt I would try this one I think if I want to try a mood pattern I would try something a little bit more simple just to get a feel of how they are with this one you just get the file because the instructions are right here so you can see these are photo instructions and it looks like a pretty simple to sew garment compared to others look these pictures uh, the tension on the sewing machine it just doesn't look very nice the next one is the Chilton from Cashmere Patterns I actually own this one I bought it quite a few years ago I think at the end of 2019 and I know that Cashmere now has sizing from 0 to 32 for some patterns but for some of the older ones like this one it's still the older size range from 12 to 28 there's also one from 12 to 32 so I have the PDF pattern this is the typical color that you would see most trenches are made I like this length right above the knee so see the line out here it's got a lot of features oh my gosh epaulets the collar the lapel it's got princess seams coming from the armhole cashmere is known for their cup sizes from C to H it's a single breasted closure on the front you can see the welt pockets are in that seam I think that makes it a little easier to sew and you have the flap right there it has a loops and the belt on the wrist stone flap on the back just one on the front and you can make it short as well I would not make a trench coat in a print like here you just can't see any of the features everything you do is so much work all the belts all the loops every little detail for it to just be lost in a print no thank you I want those features to be seen so I would definitely always be making it in a solid here's the look on the back I think that's really nice got a vent right here two-piece sleeve the shoulder fits the shoulder I really don't like epaulets I'll talk about that a little bit more look at this stone flap I think it's well placed I think it's small it's discreet it does have the feature but it's way above the bust it's like on top of the bust very at the upper chest I think that's a safe bet because with others that are bigger I wouldn't want this to land sort of right here at the apex I think that would look very strange so this is well thought out well made I think and also look at all these layers so you're gonna have this princess seam coming into the armhole right there so you're gonna have a few layers with that seam and then this stone flap is two layers at least but with the fold there you're gonna have at least four and they all overlap there so on this area of the armhole it's gonna be a lot of layers, a lot. I don't like a different colorful lining inside. I'd rather just have the same as the main fabric. But I'll talk about that in a sec. Black one looks very classic, very nice. I like it. This would serve me. I'm about a size 14 to 16 at Cashmere, but I know the smaller sizes you wouldn't have a size for you right now with this pattern. Then I found one at Style Arc. I like Style Arc patterns. I like the seam allowance that they use. I like the freedom of just doing it my way because the instructions are just a little list. I know for some people it's not great, but if you have a bit more experience in sewing, I think it can be quite freeing to just have the pattern and just make it. So I like that. And this is a simplified one, not as hard, I think, as others. They class it as medium challenging. There's only one storm flap or gun flap on the front. There's a the welt pockets are quite low there. That, that is a bit strange. The sleeve looks to be a one-piece sleeve. There's a yoke at the back, no storm flap at the back, just a center back pleat. So I think this is a pretty simplified one, at least with the features you see on the outside. It says that it's casual, classic, double-breasted, unlined. This storm flap here, that is my thing about these storm flaps. I wouldn't want these to land right at the height of my bust and sort of cut my bust horizontally there. So I'm always concerned about that, and that's why I liked this one on the Chilton, which is small. I like this tiny one because you're gonna be sure it's right above the bust right here 
all to say that I think this door flap would be something I would definitely have to test on a prototype and see where it lands on my body. Of course, if you have a smaller chest, that doesn't really matter that much. <laughs> Here, the way that you close up the sleeves is just with a buttonhole and a button, so it's quite simplified. I would probably do a full bust adjustment on it, so I'd get a bust that somewhere. I feel better about it like that. Here is one called Isla Trench Coat. This is from Named Patterns. I think this is one of the most classic ones that I've seen so far. It's way longer. I would not want a trench coat that long oh my gosh I would be tripping all over myself so I would definitely make that shorter <laughs> it's double breasted it's fully lined lots of details belted collar large lapels the welt pocket sleeve openings tabs belt the vein at the back everything I think this one does not skip any of the features this is what they call a cape right there but it's a stone flap like other people call it this collar looks quite involved right here because you have a collar stand and a collar and plus a lapel stone flaps on the front are high they wouldn't involve the bust area so I like that look at this belt and loop right there inside the collar that's all to cinch it in and get the collar to be closed size chart from 0 to 24 US from what I can see it's something that would take a lot of time to do because they haven't skipped on the details I wouldn't want that around my collar around my neckline I would feel all the bulk of that it is one of the reasons I might not choose this pattern not because of all the other features but because of all the extra things going on at the collar all of this I don't really think it's necessary at least for my life for my weather yeah and I don't want bulk at the back of my neck I think that would feel uncomfortable but it looks like an amazing pattern the next one is from Tasuti from Australia this is called Melbourne and I think this is one of the most simple ones there's a lot of features here that are sort of missing from the trench coat the collar is big, the lapel is small, it's single breasted, there are no work pockets, just patch pockets. It's very simple, it's just like a basic jacket. I don't really see anything from the trench coat other than having a bit of a pleat on the back. There are two piece sleeves, so that's nice. Okay, the line art tells you everything. It's very, very simple. It barely has any of the features of a trench coat, of a classic trench coat. So I don't know why this is called a trench coat. Anyway, if you would like a very simplified coat and you want to make it in a khaki or a beige, it could sort of look like you're wearing a trench coat. It has a detachable hood, which is different. So it's like a very simplified one that's missing a lot of the classic features. I would get a little bit bored with this one. I think I would want to have more of the features there. And then this other one is called Ulysses. I don't know how to pronounce that. I like how flowy it looks. I like the color they use. It looks to be aligned. And it's got a different type of collar here. It's just like a short collar, so there's no collar and lapel. Different. It's got a self belt, patch pockets. It's quite simplified. It doesn't really look like a trench coat from the front, but from the back, you have this sort of storm flap and the vent and the epaulets. I think what's missing here from the classic features are the actual collar and lapel. So I don't know if I'd be really keen to sew this one. This just does not look like a trench coat at all there's actually not even any buttons here i don't think this would be my choice even though they say it's a trench coat it, there's so much missing from the actual trend design to call this a trench coat the other ones are for more commercial patterns vogue 8884 these stone flaps on the front they look to be at a controversial spot especially if you have a larger bust. I'm pretty sure those would hit at a spot that's not that great, at least for me. Semi-fitted, partially interfaced, lined trench coats, double-breasted, collar, collar band, shoulder pads, yoke, two-piece sleeves. I have bought some Vogue patterns, but for an involved project like this, I think I would rather just use an indie brand rather than trying to figure out all of this the fitting you know these are made for a b cup i have to do a full bust adjustment so i just wanted to show you that the patterns are out there for trenches but i would probably not use a commercial pattern very easy vogue which is not very very easy it's just easier than other vogue patterns in my opinion it's a trench coat as well and there are some classic features here it's double breasted it's got the larger collar and lapel with the button holes there. I'm not sure if they're functional to like close the collar up and you've got a short length and a longer length. I'm not sure how very easy this would be, but it does look quite simple compared to the other one when you look at the liner. There are some neckline darts on the back. That's interesting because they're not on the shoulders. And the sleeves are just one piece sleeves. I think a two piece sleeve is always gonna fit so much better. It is an alternative if you have access to buy very easy Vogue. If I wanna buy Vogue patterns, it would take months for that to get to me. I have bought twice in the past and I've even forgotten that I bought because it'd been like five months and they got here. <laughs> 
then there's another one McCall's 8246 could be a trench coat it's got a lot of the features but the way that they sold it here was with a wool suiting I think it's got the big collar the big lapel it's got the storm flap it's double breasted it's got the well pocket with the flaps it's got a lot of the classic trench features right here you can make it short I like the shape of the storm flap at the back I think that's nice and now I can see that these are raglan sleeves I couldn't really see it with the pictures on the front okay here is the proper liner I can actually see the raglan sleeves now yeah this has got a lot of the classic features of the trench and I think it's pretty it's a good alternative if you like sewing macaws I'm very inclined to have a closer look at the Luzerne and also the Chilton from Kashmiret. Also, I like the Tracy from Style Arc. I think that's a nice one. Let me know which one is your favorite. <laughs> because this is a garment, because this is a garment that will most likely be unlined for me, and it is a garment that has a vent on the back. You usually wear it open. There is a chance that with the wind it might open up and you could see the inside. I think I would want the inside to look really, really neat. And I think surging the edges is acceptable. I might be binding them. I might be binding them like I did this one. But I wouldn't use a flashy contrast light uh, binding like I used here. I would actually use something that matches exactly the color of my trench. So that it looks very neat and very classic. I don't want my clothes to clash with that binding. You know, although the idea of having this amazing color binding inside sounds really fun. I don't think it's practical because it could clash with the clothes that you wear with the trench and I just really dislike that. I really, really dislike that. Same as with lining, if I were to line this, I wouldn't want this to open up and I have this like zebra lining in there that won't match what I'm wearing with the trench. I just don't like that. So I would probably try to match what I do with the inside to the color of the trench. That's just my thoughts on that. <laughs> because for so many of these features, you're gonna be sewing through so many layers, like for the loops and the belts and the epaulets and storm flaps and whatnot, you know, you probably need a bigger needle, at least a hundred, I would say, to go through all those layers and some really strong polyester thread, probably a lot of thread, probably more notions that you would usually plan for with another type of garment. There are lots of steps that you have to go ticking. It's not a jacket that you're gonna make in a day. I would say you'd make it over several days and I think being relaxed about it is the best way to go <laughs> so you don't get stressed. Nothing's specifically really, really hard, but if you do want a really nice result, taking time, interfacing, cutting everything properly, marking all your reference points and taking extra, extra time with your sleeves and usually with a collar lapel situation, is gonna give you a really nice precise look. That's why I'm easing myself into this project. I know it's gonna take a little while. I'm gonna be really, really, really picky about the pattern that I choose. I want to be absolutely happy with all the features. I'm still not decided on what pattern I'm going to go for. It is gonna be an indie pattern. I'm not gonna be using commercial Vogue or Macaws. I just find those just harder to work with and harder to fit to begin with because of the cup sizing sometimes and just the lack of information on the patterns. <laughs> Oh, I'd rather stay and support indie brands and just find the one that I want and purchase that pattern and really enjoy it. Depending on the length that you want to make your trench, you might need a lot of yardage or a lot, a lot of yardage. <laughs> there are lots of pieces there. It is a garment with a nice amount of ease. So the patterns are probably going to be a bit wider. You have lots of smaller pieces, all the small features, the loops, the belts, the flaps, you know, everything is just more and more and more fabric. I know I want mine for looks. I don't want mine to be waterproof. I don't even want it to be water resistant. So I'm just gonna choose a fabric that is nice, has a nice body, weight and drape. And for me, that is Tensor. Tensor is also called Lyocell. And it's not the same, but similar to Rayon in the fact that it's made from wood cellulose, but it's a whole different process. I think it contaminates less than when you create Rayon from wood. So it is a really nice fabric. It's nice and weighty, perfect, sweeting type of material. And look, when I ordered my fabric, I ordered red and the typical beige color. I don't know how to describe that color but I'm not 100% decided on the typical beige color, so I got red. When I ordered these fabrics, only the red came. The beige is still like on back order. Should arrive soon, I hope, but I wanted to show you the beige one. I don't have it, but this is the red fabric. It's beautiful. You can see the drape it has. It's just amazing. 
it's going to be easy-ish to work with. It's not so slippery. I, I can manage this, especially if a lot of the pieces are interfaced. And you know, why does the trench have to be beige? You know, I'm really, really tempted to make it red instead and just have it be like this amazing trench in red that no one else has. Because let's be honest, all the ones I've seen are either like a khaki green or a beige or a navy. I've seen people wearing trench coats around here and those are the colors I see. I never see any other colors. So how would that look if I made it in red? I'm not 100% sure, but I'll show you a picture of the website where I got my fabric in Brazil so you can see the color that I'm looking at. When I see the color in person, I'll see if it suits me or not. I have the sneaky suspicion that that beige color is gonna be a bit too warm for my undertone and it will just wash me out, which is something I worry about a little bit because I always feel like I can fix colors that wash me out a little bit with just a bit more makeup, which I, I wear anyway. But we shall see. Beige or red, let me know. I'm really tempted to do the red and to just have this wow, wow trench coat that no one else has. And about the length, I want it to be mini. I don't want it any longer or any shorter than that. I'm gonna have a look at my legging coat from Itch to Stitch. I really like that length because it's a little bit longer than all the short dresses that I wear and that is the perfect length. I'm gonna really have to count in advance and prepare when I choose my pattern, how many buttons I need. I probably need buttons of the same type, some that are larger, some that are smaller, a lot of interfacing, maybe some D-rings, I don't see that the patterns that I've looked at have a lot of hardware, but I'd have to really have a look at that. And I might just leave some features out or add some on that are not in the pattern that I choose. I am still not decided. I do want something that fits me perfectly. And I want something with a little bit more ease than what I usually wear as well. I think this time of the year is a great time of the year to start planning coats and trench coats and this type of outerwear because you're mainly still in hot weather but the cold weather is going to creep on you suddenly. So it would be nice to work on something for a good, you know, six to eight weeks or whatever, how long it's going to take. And then when you need it, you have it. And for me, a trench is something that I'm going to be able to wear year round. It would be a perfect winter coat because it doesn't get that cold here. And it would be a really nice light layering piece. I'm pretty sure mine is going to be unlined just so that I know that I'll have more chances to wear it, that I won't be hot with the lining inside. Because, you know, this is winter right here. This is winter today. And it's like 90 degrees. It's really hot. It just does not feel like winter. And just the thought of making a trench with lining. I hope this was inspiring. Let me know what is your favorite pattern, which one you like the best. Have you ever made one? Which color do you prefer, the beige or the red? <laughs> Those are my two options. You know, you probably know I'm probably gonna make the red one. And I'll see you very soon with another video about sewing. Bye.